Hey y'all, my name is Ashley Brandon and I want to talk today about not quitting. About quitting, quitting. About giving it up. <laughs> not doing it anymore. Um, I have, uh, and, and let me just say this right now, uh, from the get-go, I am a habitual quitter. I was in the past a habitual quitter. If it got hard, I'm walking away. If it got tough, bye. If it hurt, not doing it. If it was difficult in any way, shape, or form, I'm going to veer down this path where it's not as difficult. That was me in the past. So I say this from a place of love and I say this from a place of experience. Quit. Quitting. Like, do you know how many diets I've done? Oh, I don't even want to count. I, do you know how many times I've started working out because I was going to lose weight? Do you know how many times I've started uh, a job because I was like, yeah, this is it. This is going to be the job. This is, I have perpetually quit so many things in my life. And I understand that that stems from not feeling worthy. Like we don't feel worthy enough to sacrifice what we need to sacrifice for ourselves. We'll do it for other people all day long. We'll do it for our kids. We'll do it for our family. We'll do it for our church group. We'll do it for other people, but we won't do it for ourselves. And that's because we put them before us. Mamas, you know it's true, especially you mamas. And even if you're not a mama, <laughs> you're just a female. Like it just tends to be how we do things, how we live our life. And, um, do you mean people I talk to on a regular basis that say that? And they're like, I know I should put my oxygen mask on first and then help others, but it's just really difficult. And the reason it is, is because you don't feel worthy enough to make the sacrifices you need to make for you. And maybe that stemmed from somebody saying something in your past, like, you know, or maybe it comes from you not wanting to be selfish because other people in your past have been selfish and you've watched it and you don't want to be that. But let me just tell you something. I come across so many people who start something and they're excited about it. And it is, oh, look at the blue jay. Beautiful. <laughs> um, sorry, right on the window. Um, so they start something and they're excited about it and they're passionate about it. And they're like, yes, this is it. This is it. And then it takes work. And then it takes a grind. And then it's not fun anymore because it's not fresh and new. And it's not what you want to do every single day. You don't want to wake up. You don't want to do the work. It's easier to just go, oh, what's that over there? Oh, look at that shiny object. Well, I'm going to do that. Or look at that new thing. I'm going to do that. Or, oh, this diet's supposed to work better. So I'm going to do that because this one was hard. Like we are so quick to quit because it gets difficult, because it takes work, because it takes time. We are such a, I need it now society. We want, what is it? We want drive through drive through pain and instant hope. I don't know. There's a song by for King and country. We're just talking about, we want drive through quick fixes for everything. And we're not willing to put in the time and the work and the effort. Well, if you're excited about something and God has put something on your heart, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. And it's not going to be easy. Like if you think about all of the people in the Bible who went through some stuff because God put it on their heart, because God told them to, because God asked them to. I mean, Moses and the, they walked around for 40 years. Like they, they were not in the promised land for 40 years, but they Moses kept pushing, kept pushing and kept pushing and kept pushing because God put it on his heart. And in the end, they made it to the promised land. So like, let's be grateful that the Lord ain't gonna make you wait 40 years for the thing he's put on your heart. And then I had no people that, that give up because they don't even get started. Like they don't even get started because they get so caught up on, is it the right thing? Is it the right thing? Um, trying to figure out uh, what they should do. There's a phrase for it, but I can't remember it right now. But there's a phrase for it about, you know, where you just indecide, you're just indecisive and you're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to wait for God to tell me. I'm going to wait for God to speak and then I'm going to do it, right? Well, sometimes God's waiting for you to move before he speaks. I mean, he made Moses step into the water before he parted it. Sometimes God is waiting for you to just have a faith. If you... This is the biggest thing that I've learned about waiting for what God wants for you or what's your purpose or waiting for God's answer to what you should be doing next. 
do the next right thing. Like, let's talk Frozen for a minute. Just do the right thing. Yeah, anyway, um, do the next right thing. If you know it's right, if you know it's morally right, it is morally correct, it is a positive thing, it is a good thing that's going to help people, that's going to be inspiring, that's going to be motivating. If you know it is good and you're waiting for God to tell you, yeah, do that, stop. Stop with the indecisiveness and just start taking steps towards it. If you think... <laughs> That God's going to let you walk down the wrong path is not true. If you're trying to do the right thing for the right reason, God's going to redirect you where he wants you if that's not where he wants you to go. Our God is, I mean, sometimes we think that we're, we're just like, oh, I can't do that because it'll be wrong and then I'll be, do the wrong thing and it'll be bad. Y'all, can you not think God is strong enough and wise enough and enough in general to fix our steps to maybe redirect our path a little bit? to get us on the right track. At least you're moving forward and you're doing something for his kingdom. You're doing something for the good of other people. You're doing something for the good of people in general. Start moving in that direction and God will readjust your path. Keep praying. Keep waiting for him to tell you yes, no, but start doing something. So many of us sit, wait. How much time are we wasting? How many people are we not helping? Because we're waiting for God to tell us, to do that very thing. Just start, stop being so indecisive and just start taking steps that you know are good. It may not be, and then, and then you've got to be open to the changes that he may make. Sometimes we think, okay, this is the path we're going to go on. I'm going to do this. It's going to happen this way. This is how it's going to end up. And we just, we've got it all planned out in our head, how the entire path is going to go. And we're not willing to listen when God tries to redirect those steps either. Listen, if you're taking God's path and God's will, he thinks at a level we don't. So it's not always going to happen the way we think it should. And you've got to be open for that. I love this book called Mark, by Mark Batterson. It's called The Wild Goose Chase. Because if you're following the Holy Spirit's direction in your life, it's like a wild freaking goose chase. It's not anything you would have expected. It's not anything you would have planned, but it's God's plan. And that makes it so much better. And so much more fulfilling in your life when you can follow his plan, right? So I just, I just want so badly because that was me in the past. And now I'm, I'm <laughs> as difficult as things get, I push through as, as much as I want to give up, I push through. Like I, um, I'm doing this challenge called the 75 hard. And so um, what's one of the things is that you have to do some kind of physical activity for 75 minutes every single day for 75 days. Some of your eyes just went. <laughs> um, and let me tell you, tell you something right now. Like I am not a big fitness person. So uh, it's not like it's easy for me to work out 75 days in a row. Stuff comes up every single day and I don't want to do it. And I was on the treadmill today and I hit 60 minutes, y'all. And I'm just walking. I ain't running. I'm just walking. And it was the last 15 minutes was hard. I, I just physically, for some reason today, it was just really difficult. And I just kept going, okay, I did one minute. I, I can do another minute. I can do another minute. I can do another minute. And sometimes it's so hard I want to cry because I have to push through the pain. I have to push through that resistance that's trying to hold me back. And I know what that resistance is. That's the enemy going, you can't do it. You can't do it. Because if you give up now, then you're setting the precedent in your life for giving up constantly and being disappointed. And, and that's when the devil moves in. His disappointment is his favorite way to move on into your life. So I just kept going and kept going. And sometimes I get to the end of 75 minutes and I cry because I did it. I cry because it was hard and I pushed through to the point where I didn't think I could ever do it. I never thought I could do it. I, um, we were challenged by our CEO to do a 10K. Uh, I have literally said I would never do that. And then it became a moment of, are you really going to give up before you even get started? Do you really know if you can? Are you still, are you telling me that you can't do a 10K that you physically can't do it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just, and it took me forever because I walked the whole thing. And at the end of it, the last little bit, just like it always is, was the hardest. My feet felt bruised. I took a break so that I could give my foot a rest. And that was a mistake. I had like 10 minutes probably left to go. 
and uh, or 20 minutes left to go and I, I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do my foot break. I took my shoe off and it was a mistake because I when I went to stand back up, my foot wouldn't hold, bear my weight. It hurt so bad, I cried out in the locker room and somebody came over to ask if I was okay. And I just thought, is this the end for me? Like I have such little left to go and I'm gonna stop? I'm gonna quit? No, no, I am tired of quitting on myself. I am tired of my children seeing me start something and not finish it. What am I teaching them? So I put my shoe back on and I took super small steps and I cried because it hurt. And I just took super small steps and I just walked as slow as I could around the, the locker room. And then I went out into the gym and walked around the gym and I went slow and I worked through it and I got back on the treadmill and it was excruciating. It hurt and it was slow and it was not pretty, but I finished it and I finished it crying because I never thought I could do that because I put that limit on myself a long time ago and yet here I am. I completed a 10K on a treadmill, which is not fun anyway, but I did it. I don't even want to imagine what I, how my life would have gone if I didn't. I mean, and it may not seem like a big deal to some people, but for somebody who does not like to run or walk, like that was a huge deal for me. But the, that, the, 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 the fact that it was a 10K is not the hard part or the important part. The important part is, is I refused to not give in. I refused to give up. And that's been the precipice for changing how I've done things in this life and how I'm doing things in the future. And I'm not where I want to be yet. And I'm not perfect yet. Uh, and never will be when none of us are. But darn it. I want my kids to look up at me in wonder and in awe that I've pushed through some things. That I've made it through some things. And that may be a little selfish for me to want my kids to see that or feel that way about me, but they've seen me do the opposite long enough. They've seen me give up long enough and I will not give up. How do I expect people to follow me in my business if I'm not a person who shows up every single day and pushes through and will not give up? I want to be that person. So I'm becoming that person by doing what that person would do. And that person would get up every single day and complete the 75 hard and would complete the 75 minutes of exercise. That person would make this decision. Like, that's what I think. If I go to grab a bag of chips, I'm thinking, well, would this person that I want to become grab a bag of chips? Nope. Put it back. <laughs> like, just make each decision and base it on how the person you want to become, what would they do? It's kind of like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> like, but it's what would my future self do? And start pushing through. You are completely capable of more than you could ever know. The reason you recognize greatness in people is because it's in you. The reason Kobe Bryant, we saw that Kobe Bryant was amazing and great is because it's in us. That greatness is in us. We just have to unlock it. And sometimes it's been buried deep and people have told us that we're not that. But would you ever tell your children that they're not great, that they're not capable of anything, that they couldn't do something? No. What do you think he's saying to us? He's saying, you are my child. You can do anything. So stop quitting. If it is your dream, if it is your goal, stop quitting. Push through it. Do what you have to to push through it. Think of your children. Think of something important. Think of how you're going to feel at the end of it. But push through. Because if you just make it through one time, you'd be shocked at how good you feel and how much easier it is next time to keep pushing through. You just have to just push it through that first time. That first time's the hardest. And then you realize how amazing you are and you refuse to give up. So I hope you have an amazing day. I hope this helped you. I hope this gave you some motivation today. And um, I love y'all. Have an amazing day.